This is a Channel 6 News Special Bulletin. We go now to the newsroom with Logan Skeel. Newsflash. Major brush fire on Staten Island. Dateline, April 20th, 1963. The New York Fire Department responds to a brush fire on Staten Island. Several dry spells combined with prolonged water shortages have plagued the mainly thick brush, oak, and pine tree covered island. The fire is threatening residential homes. The fire began as a series of small brush fires and quickly grew into larger and larger fires. All of Staten Island's fire companies are involved. They called for help. Additional fire companies have been dispatched from Brooklyn and Manhattan. Response time was hampered because firefighters and their equipment from the mainland had to be shipped by ferry to Staten Island. Stay tuned for more details as we continue to get reports on this continuing disaster. The Staten Island Fire was a major disaster. By the time the fire was out, more than 80 fire companies and more than 1,300 firefighters had been engaged. Several million dollars of property was destroyed. Looking to the future, William Francis Gibbs and his firm, Gibbs and Cox Naval Architects, observed the Staten Island fire and saw the need for a land fireboat, a massive pumper system similar to the one on Firefighter to combat fires on the islands and in the city. Having designed and built Firefighter, a firefighting boat for the city of New York, Gibbs set about designing the super pumper system. In 1962, William Gibbs invited Mack Trucks to take part in designing a super pumper and its companion tender. The Laval Turbine was also invited to design a multi-stage centrifugal pump with a Napier Deltic T18-37C diesel engine to power the pump. A year after the Staten Island Fire in 1963, Gibbs presented a conceptual plan for the super pumper system to the fire department, City of New York, with a reasonable price tag of $875,000. The system consisted of five trucks, a super pumper, a super tender, and three satellite tenders. As you know, New York City is an old city, and many streets do not have fire hydrants. So regular firefighting apparatus had to lay enough hose to reach the nearest fire hydrant to reach the fire. If one fire company did not have enough equipment to do the job, more fire companies were called to lay hose and relay water to the fire company that's fighting the fire. The super pumper, super tender, and three satellite tenders provided a solution. The super pumper could operate as many as 10 blocks away from the fire and draw its water from lakes, the harbor, the river, or four or eight different fire hydrants, depending on how much water was needed. A high volume of water at high pressure is required to put a fire down. The super pumper, in conjunction with the super tender, was able to deliver 8,800 gallons of water per minute at 350 PSI. For its time, this pressure was nearly five times greater than regular pumpers and could deliver almost four times as much volume. The water horsepower was equal to that of 20 pumpers of that era. This high volume characteristic with the water velocity of the 7 inch nozzle from the McIntyre monitor on the super tender opened up a new approach to firefighting. Designed to combat major fires and supply water to high rise structures, the super pumper system did what was expected. We interrupt this program for a special bulletin. We go now to the newsroom with Logan Skeel for continuing updates. Newsflash, Staten Island Fire ruins 100 homes. 
Dateline, April 20th, 1963. Homes, businesses, sheds, cars, livestock, and pets were destroyed by the blazes. Fortunately, only 36 people were treated at hospitals and five were kept in the hospital in serious condition. As the embers cooled, 10 hours later, residents crowded shelters and blasted the city for poor water pressure conditions on the south shore. Throughout the blaze, firefighters often stood helplessly when no water came from the hydrants. Some firemen cried as houses burned down. One woman lamented, there wasn't any water. The firemen stood by and couldn't do a thing. Code 3 collectibles created a meticulously detailed replica of the FDNY super pumper system in 164 scale. It is made of die cast metal with many hand assembled parts to replicate the system as accurately as possible in this small scale. While talking about the real super pumper system, I will show off the Code 3 collectibles replica so you can see this detail up close. You asked, how big was the Super Pumper? Well, big! Weighing in at 68,500 pounds, a length of 43 feet, 4 inches, a width of 8 feet, and a height of 11 foot, 4 inches. For its time, it was probably one of the biggest fire apparatus made. The Mac F. 715 ST Super Pumper consisted of a tractor trailer unit coupled together. The tractor engine was a 255 horsepower Mac E&D 864 diesel engine teamed with an Allison CLT 4460 semi-automatic transmission. To say the least, this truck had plenty of power. What could be more powerful than the power plant in the tractor? That would be the power plant in the trailer. Weighing in at a mere 13,000 pounds, the engine was a Napier Deltic engine rated at 2,400 horsepower at 1,800 RPMs. With 18 cylinders, the two-stroke turbo-blown diesel engine gulped fuel at 140 gallons per hour when operating at maximum horsepower. A 14,000 pound, six stage DeLaval centrifugal pump was connected to that engine. This pump was capable of delivering a colossal 8,800 gallons of water per minute at 350 PSI, or 4,400 gallons per minute of water at 700 PSI in series operation. When drawing water from the hydrants, the pump had eight four and a half inch suction connections. When drafting water from a lake or a river, there were two 12 inch suction connections. When discharging water, the pump had the same number and size of outlet connections. <laughs> Needless to say, that is a lot of water. The Super Tender had a Mack tractor similar to the Super Pumper. Mounted on the tender, there was a 10,000 gallon per minute water cannon, the McIntyre Monitor. The trailer was divided into two main sections. The forward section was compartmented to carry firefighting equipment. The rear compartment carried 2,000 feet of four and a half inch hose in a conventional flat hose bed compartment. Under the hose bed compartment, there were four and a half inch manifolds, which went through various check valves and an air operated pressure reducing valve to Siamese connection on the side of the trailer to enable low pressure hose use of 100 pounds pressure. Another dissimilarity from the super pumper, the super tender could be detached from its tractor, allowing greater versatility. Both pieces could operate independently of each other. The super pumper was coupled to its tractor permanently. The tillerman on the super tender had the benefit of hydraulically steerable rear wheels. The tiller though was removed at some point after the super pumper entered service. The water cannon on the super tender had a range of tips from 3 inch to 5 inch and 
2,000 gallon per minute fog tip. The tender carried 2,000 feet of four and a half inch hose in 50 foot lengths. Altogether, the super pumper system carried 8,000 feet of four and a half inch flat hose. To complete the super pumper system, there were three satellite units. The first satellites were similar to 1958 Max C pumpers, but they had no pumps. Each of the three satellite units carried 2,000 feet of four and a half inch hose. They were equipped with 4,000 gallon per minute water cannons. The tips used on the water cannons ranged between two inch to four inch and two fog tips rated at 700 gallons per minute and 2,000 gallons per minute. The satellite units stretched four and a half inch hose from conventional pumpers which in turn would supply water to the water cannons or the six-way manifold. The six-way manifolds provided an easy way to connect hand lines. The six-way manifolds were usually placed in front of the fire building. Just how awesome was the super pumper system? In 1967, it responded to a fire at a postal annex and managed to supply water to the massive gun on the super tender, all three of the three satellite tenders, two tower ladder trucks, and a portable manifold with multiple hand lines all by itself. That is an awesome amount of water. From 1965 to 1982, a span of 17 years, the super pumper system responded to 2,200 fire calls. The system was retired in 1982. I would have loved to see the FDNY super pumper system in action. How about you guys? I know, Code 3 is out of business, and these sets are really hard to find today. But I've got one set available on a special site, and it will be only up until it's sold. Get your set today with the link in the description below. Once it's sold, the link will disappear. Thanks for watching, my 64th Gear Jammers. I'm Logan Skeel, the founder of Advantage Diecast, and I'll be back in the Southside Warehouse soon with another episode of Toy Talk. 528 Cougar Avenue, between Mace Avenue and Allison Avenue for a fire in apartment 612. Fox 101 Box 3440, the address 2528 Cougar Avenue, between Mace Avenue and Allison Avenue, fire in apartment 6 Charles. Attention units responding at the box 3440 says information is available upon request. The time now 205 8 hours, dispatcher 44. Ladder 41K.